Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to JSW Steel Q2 FI25 results conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing start and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ashwin Dajaj, Group Head of Investor Relations. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Suta. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ashwin Bajaj, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to JSW Steel's earnings call for Q2 for the financial year 2025. We have with us today the management team represented by Mr. Jayant Acharya, Joint MD and CEO, Mr. G.S. Rathor, Chief Operating Officer, and Mr. Swayam Saurabh, the Chief Financial Officer. We will start with opening remarks by Mr. Acharya and then uh, open the floor to uh, questions. So with that, over to you, Mr. Acharya. So good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, the global economy continues to perform well. The IMF has maintained its forecast of a stable growth in the year 2024 and 2025, uh, both. Uh, inflation is cooling off. Uh, IMF has also upgraded the US um, growth uh, uh, forecast. Uh, however, Europe, uh, China, Japan uh, continue to be a bit weaker. The interest rate cutting cycle has begun, and that is likely to be a positive for the economy at large. Uh, China's announcement of uh, uh, stimulus has been a positive development, and uh, we, we see that uh, reflecting in commodities and metals. Geopolitical risks, especially from the potential escalations which we have seen in the recent past, remain a key concern. In India, a good monsoon is expected to benefit the rural economy. Uh, as we go into H2, we see the government capex, which was slow in the first half due to the elections and weather disruptions will improve. A healthy fiscal balance, uh, stronger tax, tax collection should be supportive of continued capex uh, spending. The RBI has maintained its GDP growth projection of 7.2% and has shifted its stance to neutral which opens up space for policy easing going forward once the inflation expectations are under control. Global steel production uh, declined by 1.9% year on year to 1394 million tons during January to September. This includes about 3.6% drop in China, uh, while the rest of the world saw a modest growth of 0.3%. In quarter two, FI25, India's crude steel production grew by 2.7%, YOY to 36.23 million tons, with a consumption growth of 11.6%, YOY to 37.09 million tons. We expect this strong demand momentum to persist, with steel demand likely growing by around 10 to 11% in FI25. India's steel imports in quarter two jumped by about 43%, YOY to 3.8%. 1.8 million tons, while exports fell by close to 30% to 1.27 million tons, making India a net importer of about 1.9 million tons for the quarter. Meanwhile, China's aggressive steel exports uh, growth resulted into 84 million tons getting exported in Jan to September, which was a growth of 21%, has put pressure on the global steel prices at large. In response, several countries have imposed restrictions on Chinese imports. The Indian Steel Association is actively engaging with the government to ensure a level playing field for the domestic industry. Notably, uh, uh, the DGTR has initiated anti-dumping investigations against Vietnam and China for certain products during the quarter. At JSW Steel, mainstreaming sustainability across our business and generating sustainable value has been a priority. Energy transition is one of the focus areas for us to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. So far, the board had approved procurement of renewable power, totaling 1637 megawatt across our locations. Of this, 375 megawatt has been commissioned and balance are in various stages of being commissioned. The board has approved further renewable capacity of 870 megawatt, 
taking our total renewable capacity under procurement to 2,507 megawatts. With this, we will be able to achieve close to 25% of our power requirement, including JVML, through renewable. JSW Steel has consistently delivered industry-leading value accretive growth over the past two decades. We have already outlined our roadmap to reach 50 million ton in India through brownfield expansion by FY31. Expansions are underway to achieve 42 million ton capacity in India by September 27. The 1 million ton expansion in BPSL has been commissioned, taking the capacity to 4.5 million ton. Incremental volumes are expected to flow in from quarter 325. At JVML Vijayanagar, we have commissioned the HSM in March 24 and followed it up with the blast furnace and some associated facilities in end September. The steel melting shop is under commissioning and ramp up is expected by quarter 425. Alongside expanding our steel making capacity, we are also strengthening our downstream capabilities with a strategic goal of driving over 50% of our sales from value added and special products. As a part of this vision, we recently acquired 100% equity in Thyssen Group Electrical Steel India Limited through a joint venture with our partner JFE Steel. This acquisition grants the joint venture immediate access to the market as the production at our joint venture CRGO facility in Vijayanagar is expected to begin in 2027. Additionally, JSW Steel will also get access to technology for electrical steel making uh, from Thyssen Group uh, uh, Steel, further strengthening our technical edge and market position. Coming to a strategy of enhancing our raw material security, in Karnataka, we have increased our iron ore mining from 7 to 11 million tons capacity uh, for our existing captive mines, and we expect to mine about 10 million tons from these in FY25. Of the three new mines in Karnataka, uh, two are uh, likely to be commissioned in quarter four or FY25. The third mine is expected to com be commissioned latest by first quarter of FY26. These announcements will take our Karnataka captive mining capacity to 15.5 million tons. In Goa, the public hearing for one of our mines has been completed, and we are working towards commencing mining uh, operations in the next three to six months, which has a capacity of 0.5 million tons. Meanwhile, uh, BPSL's Netrabanda mine in Odisha is also expected to begin production in the next three to six months uh, with an estimated capacity of 2 million tons per annum. On the coking coal front, we have completed the acquisition of 20% effective interest in Ilawara coking coal mines in Australia with offtake to start early FY26. Additionally, we secured long-term coking coal linkages from Coal India during recent auctions. These linkages available for 15 years will provide around 2 million tons of raw coking coal further strengthening our overall raw material base on this critical resource. During quarter two of FY25, we reported consolidated crude steel production of 6.77 million tons, which was up by 7% YOY, as well as quarter on quarter. Steel sales at 6.13 million tons, uh, which was down 3% and flat QOQ. Our capacity utilization was higher at 91% versus 87% in quarter one of FY25. While a sharp decline in exports due to weak global markets impacted sales volume. Crude steel production at our Indian operations for the quarter uh, at 6.63 million was the ever highest, growing by 7% YOY and 8% QOQ. Steel sales for the quarter at 5.96 million ton were lower by 4% YOY and higher 1% quarter on quarter. While exports were significantly lower, and that was the main reason for a lower sales volume, the domestic sales were the highest ever, growing 5% quarter on quarter and 1% YOY on a good domestic steel growth in the first half of this year. We had the highest ever quarterly sales to the institutional segments up by 12% YOY. Our sales to the solar segment grew by 54%. We reported highest ever sales in LRPC and wire rod. Our sales to the appliance segment grew 43%, while our tin plate sales to the packaging sectors were also up by 38% YOY. Our VHP sales volumes were at 60% during the quarter, 
which was primarily lower due to lower exports. On a half yearly basis, while exports fell 35% YOY, our domestic sales grew 7% YOY to 10.88 million tons, which was our highest ever half yearly domestic sales. Quarter two, FY25 financial performance has been in a challenging external environment. Our consolidated revenues from operations were at 39,684 crores, down 8% quarter on quarter, while EBITDA stood at 5437 crores, lower marginally by 1% quarter on quarter, with an EBITDA margin of 13.7%, which is an improvement over the last quarter. Our EBITDA on per ton basis was at 8916 per ton, and the profit after tax was 404 crores. At our India operations, EBITDA per ton at 9,266 was marginally higher quarter on quarter, and our investor presentation has a slide giving metrics on the India operations. During the quarter, we have seen strong price headwinds, especially in September, largely driven by elevated imports into India. Our export sales and realizations were also impacted due to weaker global sentiments and elevated steel exports from China. Our India NSR fell by a little over 3,000 on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis during quarter two of FI25. Uh, while the international prices fell by about $50, if I were to take China uh, uh, reference uh, prices. But in spite of these headwinds, we were able to deliver a resilient performance during the quarter, aided by a sharp reduction in costs. Our cooking coal costs, as we had guided, was lower by $27 per ton. We also benefited from lower iron ore costs and lower inventory losses versus the last quarter. The U.S. operations, Ohio and Texas combined, had an EBITDA loss of about $11 million, primarily because of drop in prices, both in hot coal coiled and plates, and a maintenance shutdown at Ohio. The Italy operations generated an EBITDA of $6.2 million. Volumes improved, but the pricing environment remained weak. As you are aware, we had applied for the surrender of the Jajang mine in Odisha in August 24. IBM has approved the mine closure plan, and we have then submitted a further application for surrender of the mine to the state government. Pursuant to the closure plan approval, we have recognized the provision of 342 crores, which is an exceptional item during the quarter. Our net debt increased by approximately 4,900 crores to about 85,000 crores, mainly due to CapEx, the acquisition of our Ilawara cooking coal asset, and some increase in working capital, including the recently commissioned capacities of JVML and BPSL. We expect working capital released during H2, driven by inventory liquidation during peak consumption season. We spent about 3,384 crores of CapEx during the quarter, 7,850 during H1. We are revising our annual CapEx down from 20,000 to 16 to 17,000 crores, primarily on account of transfer of slurry pipeline to JSW infrastructure and the BF3 shutdown at Vijayanagar being shifted to H1 post stabilization of the BF5 furnace at JVL. Our revenue acceptances as on 30th September were $1.81 billion, while capital expect, uh, acceptances were at $71 million. JSW One platform, our one-stop digital marketplace for Indian MSMEs in the manufacturing and construction ecosystem, continues to scale up and has more than 67,500 registered MSME customers. The GMV during quarter two scaled to almost 2.4 times YOY to 2,755 crores and continues to grow rapidly. JSW Steel holds 62% in JSW One platform on a fully diluted basis. On the outlook side, I think as we highlighted earlier, we will get enhanced production from the new capacities at BPSL and Vijayanagar from H2 onwards. We are retaining our volume guidance of 28.4 million tons for production and 27 million tons of sales for FY25. We will take the five month shutdown of BFC Vijayanagar uh, for capacity enhancement post the stabilization of the new blast furnace at JVML. We expect uh, that to happen in FY26. Uh, the shutdown of the BF3. 
Uh, for quarter three, FY25, we are seeing improved sentiments in domestic and global markets following the China stimulus announcements, leading to an uptick in global steel prices. Similarly, the domestic steel prices after bottoming out in September have increased in October, uh, both in longs and flats. We expect uh, uh, costs to go down, driven primarily by coking coal, um, in the range of $20 to $25 for the quarter three uh, as we go ahead. We expect a healthy uh, uh, domestic uh, demand in H2, and this, along with the positive pricing momentum, should actually help our margin expansion in the second half. To conclude, India has become a major contributor of growth in the global economy, offering a multi-decadal opportunity. This is true of the Indian steel industry as well. Uh, out of the total uh, demand of the rest of the world, which has been given by World Steel, of 29 million tons expected in this calendar year, 40% plus is coming from India. We expect strong domestic steel demand in H2, driven by the pickup in CapEx by the government and private CapEx as well. It will be aided by a better monsoon and rural recovery. Uh, RBI stance to neutral should be positive and should stimulate uh, interest rate cuts uh, in the coming uh, months, and that would be stimulating investment and consumption in the country at large. China's stimulus remains a positive development. We have to monitor their exports, which remain a key concern for the global steel industry. Looking ahead, JW Steel's performance should be better in H2 with new volumes coming in from our new capacities. The price momentum looks better, lower cooking coal costs, and higher volume should aid overall habitats for the second half. Thank you, and we look forward to your questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. In interest of time, participants are requested to limit the questions to two per participant. In case of the follow-up, they may rejoin the queue. And are also requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Amit Dixit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers in a very challenging quarter. I have uh, two questions. The first one is on essentially H2 outlook. Uh, while you have outlined that things look better, but of late we have seen NMDC taking, uh, I don't know, price hike. Uh, which is not fully reflected in the steel price hike, at least in flat. Uh, so just wanted to understand how the spread uh, could improve in H2, uh, regardless of cooking coal uh, advantage that you mentioned. And similarly, we have retained our volume guidance. Uh, but the outlook, uh, for, but, the, uh, but for achieving that, you know, the, uh, the rate has to be very steep. So just wanted to understand the overall confidence on that. That is the first question I have. So, uh, question on basically the H2 outlook and improving, mar yeah, basically margin improvement. So, you know, from uh, uh, from the NMDC price, I don't know price side. You're right. The prices have been increased and uh, very quickly two times, which uh, was actually we feel not warranted in this uh, uh, pricing scenario. Typically now, since NMDC is a steel producer as well. Uh, however, uh, internationally, the way we look at it is that the prices uh, inched up after the China stimulus uh, on the iron ore side, but has now again moderated a bit. Uh, we feel the domestic iron ore prices will also moderate from the increase announced by NMDC in this month. Having said that, uh, you know we we have certain inventories with us. Uh, uh, certain, uh, I would say, certain one-offs of the last quarter, which impacted costs, will not be there this quarter. That would be positive. Cooking coal, 20 to 25 dollars, may be a positive. So these will reduce our costs going into quarter three. On the price side, uh, yes, I think we have taken a price increase both in flat and long. Uh, we feel that the pricing uh, in September had gone down steeply. 
um, on the back of international drops. This has improved uh, in terms of sentiments. I think the channel uh, stocks had reduced. So restocking demand and demand from the institutional customers have improved. And if you see our commentary, I think while retail was impacted by import sentiment, exports were lower, but our institutional sales, even for the first quarter, the quarter as well as for the first half, were actually very strong. Our institutional sales numbers for first half were again the highest ever and grew by 15%. So our focus on this remains extremely uh, strong. We expect now retail restocking to start. Uh, pricing we feel will uh, remain uh, positive because of a seasonally stronger uh, uh, you know, quarter three and quarter four. So that will aid margin expansions as we go into H2. And volume, sir? From a volume perspective, we are retaining our guidance uh, for the overall uh, volume. 27 million tons of sales and 28.4 million tons of production. Uh, I think we'll be by and large now on track to achieve with the new capacity is coming on stream. Okay. The second one is on uh, the recent acquisition that we announced at, uh, of this Titan Club uh, team in India and that uh, CRGO capacity. So is it possible to share some more contours around that? What is the current capacity there? Uh, how much capacity? Uh, whether there is a scope to increase the capacity in future? What, are, what is the current EBITDA margin? And what is the likely margin you can look at in the future? If you can just give some broad contours, that would be great. I'll be able to give you broad because the uh, you know there are still certain uh, subject to approvals uh, in the process, but uh, a CRGO facility in uh, as an asset is a very critical asset for the country at large because CRGO is a very critical material for transformers and generators. Uh, we already are facing a shortage, and the government of India is also very keen that this uh, product is made in India because it is primarily reliant on imports. Um, I think about out of a demand of about 300,000 uh, tons plus, um, about 100, 120,000 is uh, supplied from India. The balance is imported. Um, this demand is growing quite fast uh, overall globally and in India as well. This CRGO facility has uh, a technology which JSW Steel uh, uh, has acquired and that will be housed in JSW Steel while the joint venture has acquired the facility at Nasik. So this gives us a technical edge from a technology point of view as this technology is available with you in the world. Uh, from a margin perspective, I would just say that uh, this particular product is uh, advanced technology product. So the prices are uh, uh, naturally higher since the investment is much higher and uh, the margins therefore will be better. The capacity currently is at about 50,000 tons. We, uh, we have enough land and we have enough uh, possibility to expand. Uh, our uh, aim is that we would take this uh, capacity up uh, in the next one or uh, two phases and increase this capacity. Um, we will be able to give you some more color as to what once we, uh, you know, once we go in fully and uh, uh, get in the full approval system. Okay, so sure. appreciate that. Thanks and all the best. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Alok Devra from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, just a couple of uh, questions. So first is uh, the debt uh, has increased uh, in this quarter. Uh, so just wanted to understand uh, where do we see, how do we see the debt moving ahead uh, by the end of this year and uh, next year? Yeah, so debt has uh, gone up. This is why I'm here. Uh, debt yeah. has gone up by almost 5,000 crore uh, to 85,000 crore rod. Uh, that is primarily because of some cash which is locked in working capital, which Jayant explained initially. Uh, there is also uh, two one-off cash outflow. We had we paid dividend as well as we did an acquisition. So these are the basically main reasons why debt has gone up. Uh, going into quarter three and quarter four with additional volume coming in, uh, the debt in absolute terms should start to taper down. 
you know, we are committed to the, the net debt to EBITDA ratio, which we have been communicating for last few quarters. Goal in midterm will be to bring it down to below three, ideally between two and a half to three. But debt in absolute terms should, should, should start to taper down. Sure. Uh, and uh, just on the NSR, uh, so what we understand is that the prices have uh, firmed up in October and even even uh, uh, next month, some uh, you know companies are looking to increase uh, prices. Uh, but uh, you know imports continue to remain elevated, which would kind of continue till uh, November. So how do we see the NSR moving? Uh, could it be more like a, just a 500,000 rupee kind of an increase, or could we see a sustained increase ahead in NSR uh, as the demand picks up? Just some color on that. Thanks. So I think um, I know the point to understand is that the prices from the beginning of this uh, April to September closing has fallen quite sharply. So today the price levels at which uh, most of the field companies have been operating is not really sustainable. Therefore, we feel the prices have bottomed out and uh, now uh, is going for an increase, which is mostly a natural increase, which was due. Um, the demand in the second half, because of a strong uh, second uh, half quarter, as I explained, uh, will be uh, a tailwind, naturally. And uh, that, I think, in usually in a January, March, December, January, we do see price pickups normally happening. We have taken an increase in October uh, for flat steel and long steel both. Um, so we, it's, it varies in the range of 1,000 to 2,000, depending on product to product. Uh, we are quite confident that this, uh, you know, this uh, price increase uh, will be sustainable. Um, cost will go down, so therefore, to that extent, in the quarter three, we will see some better spread. Uh, iron ore price increase is, uh, which has happened recently, is one area which we need to watch. Uh, we will uh, see a cooking call de uh, decrease, which will help us in the cost. Other drivers of efficiencies will also help us. So we'll keep an eye on the iron ore side uh, as we go along into H2. Sure. Uh, that's all from my side. I would just, yeah, please, I would just please. like to add is that uh, our mining operations in Karnataka, where two mines and Goa, which will start, the BPSL mine at Netra Banda, which will start, these will automatically be much closer geographically and will give us a better uh, product at a lower price, then that automatically will aid our overall iron ore uh, average price. Sure. Uh, so that will come by uh, from Q4 onwards, is it? Yes. So, yeah. So, as we said, the BPSL Netrabandha mine, the Goa mine, and two mines in Karnataka. These mines we are expecting in Q4. Sure. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumangal Nevati here from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on 2Q uh, 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 earnings. I just wanted to understand the movement quarter on quarter on realization and cost a little bit better because both realization and cost reduction uh, is much sharper than what we were anticipating. So just if you could explain the movement. So basically, uh, you know, the uh, a mix of iron ore and cooking coal, as we said, cooking coal uh, costs have gone down by about $27 uh, per ton. We have been able to lower the uh, iron ore cost as well through a better mix of captive, uh, reducing the logistics movement cost in our overall ecosystem for iron ore. Um, our overall cost of power um, and stores and spares both have come down, and our inventory impact uh, also, you know, has been uh, positive. Lower. Uh, has been lower. So therefore, uh, I think all this uh, combined has resulted into this uh, number, which has offset the drop in NSR in overall. Okay, understood. Understood. Uh, uh, with uh, respect to iron ore, is it possible to share what what is our this year mix of capital versus outside purchase, maybe for the first half, and over the next one or two years, how are we 
seeing this change and uh, is it possible to quantify uh, versus uh, market purchase how is it impacting our financial is it at the margin slightly negative and eventually with very pipeline etc turn positive uh, uh, or today itself it is positive our captive use in this quarter uh, has gone up slightly uh, even on an increased volume uh, of production our captive use was 41% versus 38% uh, last quarter so as we uh, you know scale up our own mining uh, assets as i as we explain various assets uh, we will uh, increase our captive use but also keep in mind that uh, our expansion so our absolute number of iron ore from our captive will increase but as a percentage it may vary because as available capacity is fully ramp up and vpsl capacity is fully ramp up the percentage may differ a little bit from quarter to quarter but on an absolute number basis yes it will uh, our captive will uh, keep increasing karnataka as we said uh, we are hopeful to uh, do 15.5 million tons from our own mining operations um that let's say 15 million plus uh, there odisha uh, uh, even after surrendering gajan we have enough uh, in the remaining three mines to be able to service our eastern assets as well as move something to our dolvi asset this slurry pipeline which is already doing good progress out of 300 kilometers i think we have uh, made almost close to 170 uh, kilometers and i think we have welded closer to uh 190 uh, kilometers already so that's uh, uh that's a positive this slurry pipeline would reduce our cost uh by about 1000 rupees a ton as we had guided uh, last time 900000 rupees a ton uh our uh, mines in goa as we said also the first one will start off uh, soon that will again go to dolvi uh that would again help the uh, uh, dolvi cost and uh, uh, the new mines in uh, uh, karnataka those two mines which will at least start in the quarter four will again be positive for our own captive in karnataka so it will reduce uh, logistics cost uh, for us uh, in vijayanagar it will reduce logistics cost uh, in dolvi because of the slurry pipeline and please uh, uh, take into account that this cost of slurry pipeline reduction of 900 to 1000 is on iron ore you have to put a multiplier impact for steel and uh, similarly uh, you know the asset quality uh, because the new mines which are coming is of slightly better qualities so therefore the quality of iron ore input will be better that should be positive for fuel efficiency okay so i mean in fy 26 27 what is the quantum uh, volumes captive volumes are we looking at is it north of 30 million tons or something Yeah, it, it should be. It should be more. I think we are probably. If we, yeah, we will. We will give you that color a little bit uh, uh, separately through the investor uh, group. But uh, it will be more than thirty million for sure. Understood. Next, uh, next question is on cooking calls. Thank you, Mr. Nevatiya. May we request you to please rejoin the queue? Okay. All right. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Shah from Investec. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. A couple of quick questions. The first is you indicated on the working capital release in second half. Uh, would it be possible for you to quantify the number, please? Uh, yeah, we'll not be able to do exact uh, quantification, uh, but it could be in the range of uh, could be thousand five hundred to two thousand crores. Okay, uh, so despite say uh, if if we assume it to be on even on the higher side, we are indicating that we will go ahead with the residual capex after taking it down to 16, and our net debt will uh, reduce into the second half. Uh, is is the reading correct? Correct, because second half the volumes will go up. We have just guided that we'll hold full year guidance. That automatically means H2 volume will be higher, and that would mean incremental absolute beta, which is going to be higher. Sure. Uh, my second question is two parts. Uh, one is for uh, I think both are for Jain sir. Uh, one on iron ore and second is on coking coal. Uh, 
Uh, Ayanur, uh, Jajang, uh, sir, can you please take us uh, through the underlying uh, reason why we are surrendering? Uh, I understand we have indicated uh, non-viability. Uh, was it just because of the sizing or was it the distance of the mine from the plant? Uh, because the premium what we have paid over here, I think it's lower than to a lot of other mines that we have paid for. So that was one. And secondly, on coal, uh, possible to quantify uh, some numbers on Ilvara uh, tonnages? the total investment that we have made right now incrementally what is expected and uh, you indicated on sale around 2 million tons uh, what is the sort of pricing and by when do we see the benefits of this yeah okay on the first one on jajang uh, i don't know mine jajang i don't know mine um, i think we uh, we bid at a time a slightly higher premium i think I, it was 110 percent odd plus the uh, uh, Royalty, a bit premium, etc. So total 127. 127. And uh, there was also a, a you know rail siding in that asset, and that was one of the reasons also it was helpful to move material. But over a period of time, what happened is that this particular asset uh, was already used by the earlier uh, lessee uh, for the higher grades, and what gradually what left behind is the lower grade. So as we started mining in the first uh, one, two years, the uh, grades of the higher level got finished and the lower grades came into surface. Uh, they have high alumina, high silica, both. So from a usability perspective, it was more difficult. So it was becoming uneconomical to really run it. We had to export uh, uh, a quantity from here as well to be able to make up our MDPA. So we did not see uh, economic sense uh, in continuing it, and that is why we decided to surrender. We have enough uh, assets in Orissa right now to be able to meet uh, our uh, our uh, requirement there. Also, uh, this life of this mine also, which we had, where only two years were left. So therefore, from a life perspective also, we did not have a long time. Sure, sir. I'm sorry, I'm cool. Uh Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Shah, may we request you to please rejoin the queue? I, I will just answer the question on coal, which he had already asked. Okay. On the coal side, cooking coal, Ilawada, we uh, uh, have taken a 20% look-through interest uh, with an investment of $120 million. The offtake arrangement of about 1.2 million tons plus will start in FY26. Uh, this is a prime low volatile coal, which will come to us. Uh, which has been one of the volatile, uh, uh, from a price perspective, products. So better control on this asset will provide better stability to us. The coking coal auctions in which we have recently acquired 2 million uh, tons is the other question, I think, which you asked, is basically uh, through an auction process, uh, which is for 15 years, and this is on raw coking coal. This uh, net of yield will give us uh, clean coking coal of approximately 1.1 million, our current assets in uh, the three mines which we have should uh, give us about 1.6 million. So both put together, we should be getting from domestic cooking coal assets about 2.7 and 1.2 to 1.3 from Ilawara. So typically about 4 million tons of cooking coal we have by and large been able to um, secure. That is the overall scenario for you. Sure, sir. Thank you so much, Aljan Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Kejriwal from Novama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening, everyone. So my question is on iron ore. Uh, is it possible to share how much iron ore we produced this quarter and last quarter? Because uh, I understand that mining royalty is paid on the iron ore what we produce. And maybe because of this fact, if we look at on a per ton basis, our uh, abita per ton seems to be much higher than what it was uh, expected. So is it possible to share that number, sir? That's my first question. Yeah, just give us a second. So uh, from a production perspective, you know, last quarter, our production was about 6.7 million tons, which was uh, higher because we had to complete the MDPA, uh, uh, especially for Odisha. Uh, in this uh, quarter, our numbers are lower at about 5.1, 5.2 million tons because our MDA, MDPA requirements have been completed. 
uh, especially for the Orissa mines, and therefore the volume is slightly lower. So, sir, uh, if you look at uh, your uh, mining royalty this quarter, uh, is it just because of this uh, lower volume, or our uh, royalty rates have also reduced, and which will increase going forward? So, uh, what essentially I mean to ask is that the beta pattern outlook which we are see giving, have we factored in the cost increase according to the uh, captive iron or or mining royalty included in that? So basically, lower volumes for sure is what I just mentioned, and uh, IBM prices uh, had dropped, so that resulted into uh, lesser outflow on the royalty side. These were the two factors. And just to add, lower volume on Odisha side uh, reduces this cost. Okay. So no, because no. Really reduced on Karnataka volume. That's what. You mean. Okay. Sir, uh, because now when I'm looking at from first quarter to second quarter, even I, if I include your total raw material cost and mining royalty on a per ton basis uh, and compare it with the first quarter, it seems to be lower by around 5,000 rupees. Whereas you mentioned about coking coal, which is around $27 and some a bit of lower iron ore price. So I was just uh, trying, uh, I'm unable to get that delta, which I think uh, someone else also asked for this quarter. I, I think uh, maybe our uh, investor team can separately understand and uh, explain to you, but lower exports of iron ore is something also which you have to take into your calculation. Because last time to complete the MDPA by June, you know, ISA mines, there were some exports which were at a lower number and that uh, again had an impact. So last quarter, if you remember, we said that the mining uh, impact was uh, more, uh, which this quarter has gone down. So factors are basically lower volume, IBM prices which had uh, rolled down, so therefore the royalty premium value terms was lower, and lower exports uh, of iron ore, which was actually sharply down. So 2.3, 2.4 million, if I recall, which has come down in this uh, quarter two to and hardly 0.2 million. That was the main reason. Okay, I'll check. My second question is, uh, on account of prices, you highlighted that in October we have taken a price increase. And uh, as well as you have mentioned that in second half, we can increase our volumes. And uh, if I'm looking at uh, run rates of being more than 15%. So here my question is, one, uh, the blended iron, uh, blended steel price in October is uh, in flat products. Is it higher or lower than our Q2 average? That's one. And secondly, uh, when we are talking about India apparent steel consumption, we have seen that it has increased by around 11% YOY whereas even our domestic sale has increased just by 1%. So even if, uh, you know, second half, uh, how we are going to have 15 or 17% increase in volume growth? That's my question. Let me answer your second part first. I think when you are looking at YOY, uh, we had a liquidation of inventory on a lower production in the quarter before, quarter 224, due to which you know, the base was higher, and that's why you saw a 1% increase. Whereas on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, our sales basically were up in the domestic by 4.8%, close to 5%, as against the India uh, domestic growth of about 4, 4.2%. So we are still uh, doing well on that front. On the first half of this year also, our domestic uh, sales, as I mentioned, was uh, quite strong, and the growth was quite strong. Uh, going forward into, you know, into the NSR, it's difficult to give the full details in one this thing, but let me uh, put it this way that uh, we have taken a price increase, uh, as I said, for flats and long goods. We expect that the prices which were very low in the month of September uh, will uh, not be sustainable and therefore the increase is something which is real and uh, should be sustainable. This is uh, one positive. The cost on cooking coal will go down, and that would help. On an average, the uh, NSR, uh, by and large, for quarter two and quarter three, uh, you know, we would expect that we will be close uh, in terms of stability. On an average for quarter two, although we exited at a lower September rate, but on an average basis, we will be better because the product mix and the price increase which we have taken forth. Sure, sir. Thank you and all the best. Sir. 
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ketan Mehta from BOB Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. <laughs> we have indicated growth rates for every category of sales, like institutional segments, LR, LRPC, and wireless, which are quite strong. Would we be able to indicate some quantum about this segment as well? How much they contribute, volumes they contribute? So it would be difficult to give you uh, product-wise, segment-wise, but uh, you know, from a uh, overall, as I said, the institutional was very strong for the first half. Uh, in which, in the institutional, we said our auto sales was positive. It grew by six percent uh, YOY in the first half. Our solar sales were positive. They grew by ninety percent. Our Overall, renewable energy grew by 32%, if you were to look at solar and wind. Uh, appliances grew by 65% YOY. Our branded sales uh, have been stable in spite of the overall retail being impacted. Our branded sales grew marginally, modestly in, uh, in good branded products. So by and large, uh, I think we'll be able to give you this flavor. Uh, our exports have been down. That has been the major uh, 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 Challenge, but I think we should look at it this way that we have aligned our production and sales to the domestic market because the growth in the domestic market was very good. 13.5% growth in the first half of this year, which enabled us to reduce our export, which also was affected by a low demand and a low pricing environment. So that has again been a positive. Sure. Sir. And second question is about basically in the quarter two. While domestic sales growth was around 12% YOY at the country level, our growth was around 4-5%. Which are the segments where we would have lost the market share? So domestic growth, 12%, you're talking about the YOY again, right? Yeah. You're talking about So here, basically, you know, the way I think we have to also look at it is between uh, also flat and long separately. In... Uh, in, in the flats, our market shares are more or less uh, stable. In longs, we are doing quite well, but our volume is 25% in our overall mix. 75% is flat. Uh, the main reason where we lost a little bit of market share is in the flat, which was primarily because of import. Import moved, uh, as we said, in this particular quarter to 3.2 uh, million odd tons. And that uh, was an increase uh, uh, over the last quarter and our exports also reduced marginally. So this two combined had an impact of almost, you know, 1.2 million tons as a country I'm talking overall. So reduced exports by about 200,000 tons and exports going up, uh, sorry, exports going down by 200,000 tons and import going up by 1 uh, million tons. So 1.2 million tons incremental availability. So imports basically replace some part of the domestic demand that impacted the share of flats, I think, overall. Other than that, I think we are by and large uh, good uh, in, the, in the country. If I can just add, uh, last year, quarter two, as Jayan mentioned, uh, we did almost one and a half lakh ton of inventory liquidation. So if you look at last year, quarter two, both production and sales were at 6.34 at console levels. If you exclude the base, Dilution impact, the growth in domestic will be actually seven and a half percent. Yeah. Right. Also, I think you look at it from uh, uh, overall uh, quarter to quarter perspective, the domestic India grew by 4.2 percent, where we grew by 4.8 percent. So, this apart from this one off, which Swayam explained, which is a variation in YOY, you see, quarter on quarter, whatever India has grown, I think we have done better. Understood. So just one question on the TRG or T. Some of the Chinese companies have been indicating margin in the range of $1,000 per ton. So would we be able to capture the margins in that range for our facility as well? So I would not uh, like to comment at this stage on exactly giving you the margin, but uh, directionally, uh, uh, I think this is a very high margin product. And uh, absolutely right. So this is something which uh, uh, give us a little bit more time to complete all the 
processes which are in in the system then we'll be able to give you some more thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of amit nagarka from axis capital please go ahead Oh uh, yeah, hi. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. So, um, uh, my question was around. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, can I ask you, Ahmed? Can you speak a bit louder? We are unable to hear you clearly. Oh uh, yeah, hi. Uh, is it better? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, now better. Yeah. Yes, so, uh, my my question is around the overseas businesses. Uh, so, like, uh, I think uh, second half of last year and earlier this year, also we are seeing. Uh, uh, that the profitably coming coming in from uh, of op as well as the place and pipe mill so could you just uh, help us understand as to uh, uh, why things have deteriorated so much and is this a new normal situation as far as our subsidies in us is concerned i think ohio in fact i mentioned there was a shutdown which uh, was not planned maintenance shutdown which we had to take that resulted in lower volumes Uh, uh the lower pricing environment overall internationally also affected the prices uh baytown uh, while it posted uh, a positive uh, uh ebitda was lower than the previous quarter but overall because ohio impact was more there was a loss in italy uh 6.2 uh, million euros of ebitda uh, slightly lower than the previous quarter but the volumes were better the prices were low because of the international price scenario in general uh italy will continue to remain uh, i think in, a, in terms of volume it will remain good i don't see a problem uh from because from an asset side it's a real asset which is primarily driving the volumes and that has a strategic content and therefore will continue to remain in good demand and i think the pricing will be better than other products per se as far as us is concerned i think we have seen a price improvement in ohio primarily because of the international market post the china stimulus in us has also improved uh, the uh, post the shutdown the facilities have started again so the volume part in ohio uh, in this half will be uh, back to normal uh, baytown uh, the plates prices haven't improved as much as yet but we are expecting some improvement as we go into quarter 4 it would be uh, uh, i would say it will be better than what we have performed in quarter 2 uh, for sure but i would not be able to uh, hazard a guess right now and give you a number on what kind of numbers could come no i am not looking for a number i'm just trying to understand like you, you need about 100 million dollars ebitda in the plate and pipe in 23 and about 110 in 24 and for sure that to offlay the basically the pricing basically the pricing so you know the prices if you really look at If the prices of the coils went down from whatever nine hundred dollars plus to six hundred dollars plus uh, per net ton, which happened in US, and then it has climbed now to again over seven hundred dollars per ton, so pricing uh, really destroyed your margins. Even plates, if you were to look, uh, I think on a uh, YOY basis, the uh, pricing for plates have also come down. So Ohio. if i see on a qoq basis itself price have come down by 15% in baytown it had come down by about 10% close to that these are cru numbers so that was the basic impact i think the pricing scenario now is improving that will aid the uh, the margins to improve so sure. and and just lastly uh, on, on the guidance i think coking call is at 20 25 dollars for q3 right 20 to 25 dollar for QC, yes. Okay, sure. That's all. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rashi Chopra from City Group. Please go ahead. Thank you. Just following up on a question asked earlier, that there's a big delta on the you know the realization for time differential between the first quarter and the second quarter, as well as the expenses. In the sense that the realization declined by about 3,000 rupees, but if we actually Divide the revenues by the volume. That number comes closer to six thousand. So is this whole thing explained both on the revenue and the cost side by lower iron ore exports? Yeah, iron ore export, uh, lower iron ore export is one big reason. Uh, but broadly, the three thousand delta we negated at Jayant explained almost nine fifty thousand rupee, which is a combination of lower iron ore cost as well as lower Odisha losses. 
then we had uh, gotten about $27 gain on cooking coal. And uh, we also saw other type of, for example, steam coal prices coming down, a number of other, uh, let's say, efficiencies which, uh, which and lower inventory losses, which actually helped us cover the last thousand. That's broadly what the split is. Got it. And then on the uh, on the volume targets that you maintained, uh, are they maintained individually as well? Like the Indian operation target has still, like the patch target is still 26 million tons for the year? The overall guidance which we had given for 27 million tons uh, was including console basically for both, and 28.4 was also console. Uh, including U.S. operations, so both uh, but the overall targets will maintain, and uh, individually uh, I'm not getting into detail right now, but I think overall they are maintaining for sure because I think I would uh, because of the ramp up of uh, JVML, I'll not be able to give you exact details as to how, but 26 million uh, as you asked, Indian operations uh, will will certainly be there. Okay, and just one last question. Any uh, any guidance on the capex for next year since you've reduced it this year? Since we've reduced it this year, <laughs> no. Actually, capex what we've reduced is basically for uh, two reasons. As I explained, one was the slurry pipeline transfer mm -hmm. and the BFC postponement of the capex, which uh, both these put together have resulted primarily in this number. No critical projects have been cut. Uh, as yet, we have not done anything like that. So therefore, this 20,000 to 16, 17,000 is only that number. Uh, so next year, going forward, our uh, expenditure on Dolby Phase 3, which is the critical asset which is going on, our Cocoven, our slurry pipeline, our pellet plants in uh, Orissa are all on track. Uh, the mining side, beneficiation, mining asset, uh, operationalization, CapEx, all, all on track. There is no change in that. So the shortfall this year will just get added on to what you were targeting for next year? Is that a fair assumption? Not, not necessarily. Uh, I think what Jayant is saying is anything which is critical or would add capacity, uh, we will not uh, slow it down. Uh, exact cash will be able to guide perhaps in a subsequent quarter. Yeah, but the slurry pipeline transfer will be permanent because that mm -hmm. is something which we are transferring out. So that will not come back. But BF3, which we have postponed from now to next year, is something which will come as a CapEx next year. So when we take CapEx for next year into account, we will calibrate our CapEx accordingly, keeping that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question we will take uh, is from the Rhino Fashion from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, sir, first, you know, just a clarification on this, uh, uh, the Thyssen deal, uh, the technology has come to JSW Steel and the asset has gone to the joint venture. Is that understanding right? Yes, the yeah, understanding is right. So what is the like reason behind such structure? Uh, like any, and, and what is the outlay for us for acquiring the technology out of that uh, 4,000 crore? So, so uh, without uh, getting into details of the breakup at this stage, but uh, uh, we basically wanted to uh, acquire the technology and have it in JSW Steel because CRGO, as we said, is a technology uh, which is available with a few. It's an advanced technology. Uh, we wanted to house in JSW Steel. JFE already has a CRGO technology in Japan. Uh, right. So, therefore, for them, it was uh, not required to house it in uh, Okay, okay, got it. So, secondly, uh, you know, in terms of the price outlook, uh, just to clarify, uh, you did say, and like we know, September exit prices were uh, pretty weak, and while we have taken as an industry some price hike in October, do you expect, uh, you know, Q3 realizations to be better sequentially? Uh, is that what you referred to earlier in your comment? No, I'm not saying that. Yeah, I think that's a point which is good to clarify. No, I'm not saying that. Basically, what I'm saying is that the September exit was weaker. The Q2 right. average was a little higher because the September right. fall was steeper. Uh, the increase which we are taking or which we have taken in October and a change in the product mix, which we expect, uh, should enable us to 
get to a similar average as uh, uh, quarter two. So therefore, the fall which has happened in September, to that extent, basically, we are trying to see how to make up through a mix of price and product mix. Got it, got it. And so lastly, can you just quantify your EBITDA per ton for uh, Q2, you know, given all this confusion on uh, price decline and cost decline, which has happened this quarter? Can you just uh, quantify the EBITDA per ton for Q2 standalone? EBITDA per ton for Q2 for console was no, no, standalone. Eight, standalone. Our uh, eight seven six five. Eight seven six five. Okay. 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 Got it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, being here today. As uh, we said here that uh, India continues to be a strong uh, uh, growth uh, area internationally, globally. Uh, it's a bright spot. We have seen the steel demand growing very well, first half 13.5%. Keep in mind that the elections and the weather disruptions uh, disrupted. In spite of that, we ended the first half with a 73 million tons odd demand. The second half is usually better. Last uh, year, we ended the second half with 73 million, which we have done in the first uh, half itself. So we are expecting that this year, the demand will finish at a range of 150 million or so. Um, our total volumes from our new capacities will go up in H2. That will help us to play into this demand, and that will give us an improvement in our absolute EBITDA numbers. On a product mix point of view, we have some downstream capacities, uh, which will be utilized now with the HSM3 coming in. So the product mix also uh, will go into some bit of value added. Uh, our uh, iron ore mining operations uh, will start in uh, our uh, Goa mines, our uh, Netrabandha mines in BPSL and Karnataka, which should further aid our cost side. Uh, CapEx, we are uh, by and large on track to complete all our projects. Uh, we expect that this year we will be able to meet all the guidances which we have given, 27 million tons of sales and 28.4 million tons of uh, production. The full production ramp out for the new capacities will play out in FY26. So outlook, uh, India positive, steel positive, sales to do steel also positive. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please contact us at Investor Relations if you have any further questions. Good evening. Thank you. On behalf of JSW Steel, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect.